This head represents the god Min. Min was an extremely important ancient fertility god that was revered for over 3,500 years as the god of harvest of sexual potency. This specific piece dates from the 18th dynasty and specifically actually from the rule of Amenhotep III. So we know from uh, reliefs and small statuettes of men that he is almost always depicted in the same way as a human male uh, figure with a very noticeable erection and uh, a flail in his raised arm. But more specific for this piece, of course, none of that is preserved, but here we have the, the headdress, which is also very typical of him, although there are some slight variations. But the combination of the skull cap with the ribbon, with the feathers, makes it very clear for us that this is a statue of Min. This piece is very rare because this iconography was often destroyed and very few examples have survived. Yes, there are only three uh, parallels that we know of, of this size, of this uh, monumental lifelike uh, size. So only three in, uh, over a period of more than three and a half millennia that the god was worshipped. That's quite amazing. Uh, so the oldest ones are uh, three colossi from Koptos. Uh, which are very archaic in style, but you can already tell the basic iconography is the same because the god is holding his phallus in his hand. And then all the way on the other side of the time spectrum, there is a, a black marble statue from Hadrian's villa uh, at Tivoli, which is very clearly Egyptianizing in style and subjects. It's black marble and it shows a young god with his hand around his phallus, his other arm raised high, he has the same ribbon as, as this god here, so we know it's Min. So that's quite amazing that in this long period of time, the iconography is unchanged. I think I can see why Hadrian would have liked uh, a sculpture with this kind of iconography in his villa. Um, um, I think there is an, isn't there another um, related example? Yes, uh, one more actually that we know of. Uh, there's a, a big statue in the British Museum. It's from the 18th dynasty, so it's chronologically very close to this one, or at least a lot closer than the other two examples we just discussed. And it's a statue, again, the same god with his uh, arm raised and his fall is visible, standing next to Pharaoh Horemheb, who was the last pharaoh of the 18th uh, dynasty. We talked about the basic iconography of the piece, but um, I, I noticed on the examples that sometimes he also wears a, a crown. Yes, uh, exactly. So the crown is uh, very like that of Amun, uh, an important uh, creator god. But in this case, he's wearing a skull cap, which is uh, a signature attribute of Ptah, who is another uh, creator god, and more specifically, a god of the architects and the uh, craftsmen. And so we have to realize that Egyptian religion is very complex, and there are a lot of different uh, ways to approach uh, a concept like creation and every uh, separate way to approach that concept would be uh, embodied by a different god. Bert, can you explain me what creation means for you in Egypt? It could mean uh, a lot of different things. Uh, you could approach it like a, a co concept of going from point A to point B, from non-being to being, or you could also approach it uh, like many Egyptians did, as a cyclical concept. Uh, you know, every year uh, the Nile flooded, uh, and the plains with, with water and there were silt deposits. And if that didn't happen, there was no harvest, there was no life. So they completely depended on this cycle of, of life, of seasons. And Min represented this raw power that was needed to, to fuel that cycle. He is the seed that is sown in the lands. He is also the water that overflows uh, the lands every year. So without him, there is no, no life, no harvest. The cycle does not continue. And does that relate also to the color of the stone? That, yes, that? Uh, exactly. So uh, the Nile floods, they were very dark in color. The soil uh, is almost black. And so the, the god is always uh, depicted dark of skin. Uh, on reliefs as well, we see it. it. He's painted black or dark blue. And so it's very probable that this also influenced the choice of material here, which is a black granodiorite. We know from his iconography that he also holds a, a flail uh, to, to cut the harvest. Mm -hmm. um, how does that relate to, to, to him as a god? Well, so uh, if he as a god is responsible for this uh, continuous and cyclical generation and regeneration of all life, that also includes the harvest, of course. 
And so this, uh, this flail, a very humble agricultural tool, uh, very quickly became a, a symbol of power in ancient Egypt. It became a part of the pharaoh's regalia together with the crook. So the crook and fail, very noticeable. Everybody recognizes it from, uh, from pharaoh statues, but it's also a symbol of Min because he has the power to control the harvest. Control the harvest in a sense that if he would decide not to have a harvest, he could also decide that. And so that kind of gives him the, this, this power. Yes, he, it's his power that fuels the eternal continuation of this uh, life-giving cycle of the Nile. For me, this idea of the cycle of life and, and the eternal role of creation is, is linking to, of course, many of the artists that we've been working with. That's why I feel that this piece is so much part of who we are and what we do.